Hi everyone, Bethany here with Rough Beginnings Rehab and I have something really important for those of you that own dogs at home to please uh, listen to. Even if you just watch this page for occasional fun clips and training tips and cute photos and your dog doesn't even have really any behavioral issues, you still need to take a listen to this video. In this really tough time while we're home for, especially in the cities, a lot of us are home for a week to two weeks, your dog isn't used to that. And a uh, positive and negative about dogs is they, they adapt. They can adapt to almost anything. They really can. So having you home all day long for even a week, let alone the two weeks that's projected, is could potentially be very problematic for your dog. Um, I just want to give a special thank you to a uh, follower, someone who's been to one of my seminars, asking me a question about this, um, that I, we've all been a bit distracted that, um, I hadn't really thought about and that is separation anxiety. So separation anxiety can be developed rather quickly in a dog, even that didn't have it before. You got to think about it. Your dog is used to you going to work for a chunk of time and coming home and going to work and coming home um, or having a dog walker. Or there's a lot of dogs out there that hang out for eight hours um, in a crate, which I know to some of you sounds cruel, but a lot of dogs can do it without any problem. They get exercise in the mornings and evenings and it works out great. Or they're hanging out on the couch for seven, eight, nine hours. Um, that's a very real thing that a lot of dogs have learned how to do and they're quite happy. But that's not the case right now. You might be at home with your dog um, an unnatural amount of time uh, or just a different amount of time than they're used to. But eventually you're going to go back to work. And when you do go back to work, it might be harder than ever trying to recoup <laughs> some of the loss that's happening. Not to mention some of the stress that everybody feels right now that your dog is absolutely going to feed off of. And you're home, petting it whenever it wants, on the couch with it more sharing more softness, sharing more love, maybe having a good time or maybe being stressed and your dog is feeding off of that as well. And then you're gonna leave them in a week, two weeks, three weeks, and they're supposed to just jump back to the way things were before without any problems. That's not going to happen for a lot of you out there. Again, even with great nature dogs that don't really have any behavioral issues. Anxiety is a horrible thing and it can stack slowly where you don't even notice it. Happens to people too. Just stacks and stacks and then all of a sudden it's, it's 10 times worse than you ever thought that it could be. So I just wanted to give you guys some real tips on how to deal with your dogs at home to prevent separation anxiety from happening. Now, I do understand some of you that like live in apartments, even a studio apartment, and you can't actually separate yourself from your dog. I do understand that, but let's come up with some ways to do the best we can. All right, tip number one. For those of you that do crate your dogs, or maybe you used to, but you kind of weaned your dog off of it, start crating. Um, I would suggest two bouts of two to three hours a day while it's daylight outside. Um, that way they keep used to that, that rhythm. Um, and then if you used to crate your dog and you haven't in a while, but you still have that crate, bring it out. If you have a, a quiet room that you could put your dog into and then you could be quiet in another room, even if it's only three hours once a day while it's daylight out, that's ideal. Um, but the, the perfect scenario would be two bouts especially if they're crated when you leave for work usually. Two bouts of crating during the day, two to three hours. Um, it's critical, guys. It's critical because when they are out, they're getting more access to you than they're used to. So it's very critical. Uh, let's say that you don't crate your dogs and they're usually loose um, in a bedroom. You, you find a time to work in the living room and you put them in the bedroom for the same protocol. At least one three hour stint, preferably two, two to three hour stints of time in the bedroom and be as quiet as you can. Play some radio, um, a fan, the TV, something that maybe you don't normally do to kind of block out your footsteps, but uh, it's important. They need to be separated from you. Let's say your dog gets the whole house and 
Now they have access to you. You need to go, you need to take your computer and try to go into the bedroom or the garage, or if you live in a studio apartment and you have a giant closet, <laughs> like I'm, I'm just telling you that's how important the separation aspect of this is. Okay. Um, please keep, just, just keep those things in mind. And this is a great time if you have not taught your dog a solid place command where they can stay in their dog bed for two to three hours um, on command, not because they're tired and they wandered over there on their own, but on command, now's a good time to start. Please check out our YouTube. We have a like leash manners with um, a young dog that's on prong collar that goes over how to do it. And we have some other videos with tons of videos, <laughs> but you can go and check out specific playlists for doing it with food and a slip leash, for doing it with prong collar and doing it, I don't know if I have an e-collar one up, but my point is, is there's stuff out there for you, either on my channel or lots of other people's, how to, how to teach place, how to proof place, because that's the key. You have to proof it to where you can walk around the dog, you can sit down, and they're at a distance from you. And then um, I'll just tell you, like when I lived in um, an apartment and it was, it was one bedroom in the kitchen and everything was kind of all together with the living room, and I would put my little dog happy because she would get anxiety. So uh, she has separation anxiety already, <laughs> let alone if I was home for a few days. So I would put her at the opposite corner of the room furthest from me. And I'd try to be out of sight if I could to challenge her, not doing place duration at my feet. So for those of you out there that maybe you're uh, clients of mine or you've done other things with your dog based off of videos and they know a go to your bed command or a place command. Do not put them by your feet all day. Um, even if you're doing the crating two to three hours a couple times a day, most of their place duration needs to be as far away from you as possible. And that's the truth. And you don't look at them, you don't bother with them, you don't do anything with them while they're in place duration. You try to have that separation. Now, obviously, I'm not saying don't work with your dog, guys. Have some fun. Teach them some new tricks. Um, you know, go for longer walks. Like, do whatever you want to do as far as actively working with them. I'm talking about when you're not actively working with them. And you're just like, oh, mm, so cute. Oh, my God. Oh, oh look, at, look at that. Oh, picture, picture. I just, I love my dog, you know, and I'm so bored. <laughs> All of that is what will make it so hard for them to adjust to you going back to work. Um, I would also pull back on the affection you're giving them. And the reason why is not because I'm mean, it's because just your presence in the home all day, um, even if you're putting them away for chunks of time, your presence in the home is affection. It's them feeling like they have access to you. And when you take that away, it's going to cause some anxiety. So to try to lessen the stress of that, don't give them quite so much attention or affection. We want this to be as smooth of a transition as possible. Work them, play with them, have fun with them. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying watch the snuggle level. If it's tripled, you're going to have a problem potentially when you try to go back to work. It's, it's going to be a real issue. And as the person who uh, pointed this out to me, because she asked me a question about it, you know, she's worried because she had a dog with separation anxiety once and she wanted to make sure her current dog didn't develop it. Her quote, I believe, was separation anxiety ruins lives. And she was absolutely right. It does. There are also a few other things you could um, be a little bit more firm with thresholds with uh, when you're playing with them, that on off switch, the down and then break, woohoo, go get the ball, drop it down. You know, you could be more strict with those things to build some leverage to help your dog control impulses right now. That's a great idea. Uh, the other thing, if you've hung in here this long um, and you're a client of mine or you're very familiar with my training, you may not need this next part. But I wanted to go into why do all these things help with separation anxiety? Like what, why would all these restrictions help with that? So that's what I want to kind of lightly go into right now. So um, separation anxiety is basically when your dog is addicted to attention, just to keep it really simple. So I want you to really think about that. Think about addictions and, and how they work on the brain and what they do to people and how they ruin lives. Um, separation anxiety is an addiction to people 
and attention. I should say attention, okay? So when we do everything we can to minimize the likelihood of that happening, uh, because dogs do adapt so incredibly quickly, for better or for worse, we wanna set them up to succeed. Because if you don't, you're being selfish. I'm sorry to sound cruel, but you're being very selfish because you gotta think of it from your dog's perspective. They are getting all of this access to you and then you're just gonna take it away. Dogs don't, dogs don't adapt overnight. It takes time and it takes managing their emotions. So why set them up for all that stress and heartache and you as well, like all the stress it'll put you through. Um, please keep that in mind. Um, it, it's actually similar to kids, like when kids first start going to school, it's hard for them, they wanna stay with mom. Uh, not all of them, but a lot of them do. Um, it's very stressful, but because kids can rationalize, they tend to adapt. <laughs> better and faster. Dogs, on the other hand, because they don't rationalize, um, they will hold on to any, any state of mind that causes arousal, dopamine, serotonin to the brain, okay? So they will adapt quickly in the one direction that gives them excitement and love and happiness. And, you know, like, like I said, just all the dopamine to the brain, um, kind of like eating sugar. <laughs> um, we get addicted to sugar. It's like cocaine, they say. Um, but then to get off of it, to adapt to getting off of that is very, very difficult. Okay. Uh, because of, of, what the um, what the brain does um, as far as how they handle chemicals and how they can ad get addicted to those chemicals and seeing us all the time reinforcing constant excitement. Um, I hope that makes sense. But anyway, that's why that's why we're doing this. That's why I'm giving this advice. Um, not trying to be mean to your dogs. I'm trying to help them. But I know that some people, when they hear, oh, give your dogs less affection and more structure, even though you're home, that sounds mean to some people. So I'm just trying to explain the reasons behind it. I've been doing this for a long time and um, separation anxiety is something that I am, unfortunately, very familiar with. Um, it's a difficult beast. And so you'd much rather bend over backwards to prevent it than have to work with a dog that has it. Good luck out there. Stay safe.